Good afternoon. Welcome to this webinar on SOC 2 compliance and certification. My name is Kishore Vaswani. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer of Control Case, and I'm joined today by Ricardo Pardo, who's our partner in Control Cases, SOC, and ISO practices. I really appreciate the time today you have taken to attend this webinar on SOC 2 compliance. A few housekeeping items as we get started. Our webinar today is expected to run 25 to 30 minutes with ample time for a few questions. Any questions we are not able to get to, we will make sure we email you the responses right after the webinar. As we go through the webinar today, feel free to put anything in the chat window if you cannot hear me properly, and please do put things in the questions window for any questions that you may have on talk to compliance, certification, or really any compliance topic in general. A copy of these slides, as well as this recording, will be sent to everybody next week. You can also go to our website at www.controlcase.com to sign up for future webinars, as well as uh, hear and view past webinars. The first slide has three references that you might find useful in the context of SOC 2. You can see a compliance checklist, you can see a blog. One of the things I'll talk about towards the end, again, is that we are offering to our customers free 60-minute sessions to work through on a SOC 2 compliance project plan with them as part of our offer to our customers as well as to well, companies who are looking to get into the SOC 2 space. And I will talk more on that later. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. Um, our agenda today is fairly broad. You know, we talk and introduce you to SOC 2 compliance. You know, we talk a little bit about the SOC 2 attestation. Uh, we talk about the assessment, the audit. We talk about our methodology. Uh, Ricardo will talk in depth about the nuts and bolts of SOC 2, you know, and some of the principles and so forth. Uh, options as we go as we go through this today. A little bit about Control Case. We at Control Case focus on IT compliance and related certifications. That's all we do. Uh, compliance and continuous compliance is a key area of focus in what we do for our customers. We always are a partner to our customers in our assessments and audits as we look at it, we are not a checklist auditor. We certainly work with you in a partnership manner, but always do the right thing from an assessment perspective. We also use SkyCam for automation to streamline processes where we can. And finally, our flagship offering is one audit where customers can do a single assessment and get compliant or certified or attested to, to multiple regulations as the end product of one audit. And here are some of the regulations that you see that we would participate as part of one audit. That being said, I'm pleased to hand this over to Ricardo Pardo, the partner in our SOC and ISO practice, to talk about the details of SOC. Ricardo, on to you. Thank you very much, Kishore. And I, again, I want to thank everybody for joining today and welcome to the webinar. So let's talk a little bit about SOC. What does SOC stand for is one of the questions that we get asked quite a bit. SOC stands for Systems and Organization Controls. It was developed by the AICPA and are the ones that uh, have oversight on it. SOC attestation engagements are an exercise in the review of organizational internal controls from either a financial or a business process and IT-related functionality. There are also three flavors of reports, SOC 1, SOC 2, and SOC 3. So what do those three reports entail? The SOC 1 is primarily a financial-driven controls engagement. SOC 2 has more of a focus on process and IT-related functions. These functions are driven by what's called the trust service criteria, and we'll get into a little bit of detail in a moment on those. Then there is also a SOC 3. Now, when are these reports applicable? There are two types of SOC reports. For each flavor, there is a type 1 and a type 2. The type 1 is a point-in-time report that looks at 
the implementation of controls internally, essentially saying yes or no, they are in place. The type two goes a step further and actually looks at the effectiveness of the design of the controls over a period of time. Now, this is always done in a retrospective manner, looking back for a long period of time, no less normally than six months and no longer than 12 months. So what is SOC 2 compliance in general? SOC 2 compliance focuses, as I mentioned, on non-financial reporting of internal controls and systems. It looks at protecting the confidentiality and privacy of the data being stored and is really a focus for third-party organizations, organizations that you have trusted relationships with and their respective CPA firms. So who does SOC 2 compliance apply to? In essence, any organization can be SOC 2 compliant. It is really focused on ensuring that there are controls over the required trust service criteria. And it is a way or a methodology to show that those business processes and IT related type of controls are in place. So let's talk a little bit about the five trust service criteria. The five criteria are security, availability, confidentiality, processing integrity, and privacy. Let's go a little bit of detail into each one of these. The security aspect of it is normally also referred to as the common criteria. It is included in all SOC engagements. It focuses on protecting and securing the data in the systems housed within your information management system or your environment. Examples of what you might see included in this trust service criteria, what things you might have to accomplish to be able to correspond to security are items such as vulnerability testing, uh, penetration testing, access controls, physical security, intrusion detection systems. Let's talk a bit about availability. And availability really talks to accessibility. Many organizations that have service level agreements or SLAs on uptime are looking at assessing against availability. It really is an assurance that the data that is housed within you or the systems that organizations from you are using are going to be readily available when they need them. What items might be included in the availability point? Uh, items such as performance, incident monitoring, uh, disaster recovery and response, replication redundancy. What is confidentiality? Confidentiality, just as it kind of states, is maintaining the data that is housed within the systems confidential. Big proponent of this is encryption of the data that is housed within these. And so these might be some of the items that you might be able to demonstrate your commitment or your controls over confidentiality physical access controls, network application firewalls, especially cryptographic solutions. Processing integrity. Processing integrity really talks about how the data is flowing through the system. As data comes into the entry point of the system and goes out in any kind of output, be it a report or being any, really any type of output, how is that data going through the system? Are there checks and balances to make sure that the data is maintaining accuracy, completeness, and timeliness. What is inherent of process integrity? Uh, quality assurance checks, process monitoring systems. And then lastly, there's privacy. Privacy really reviews the onus of responsibility on the privacy requirements for personally identifiable information, so PII. Those items might include such as names, social security numbers, contact information, address, things of that nature. And that is really addressing how individuals' data is processed, is handled. And so things that you might see in how to address privacy is items such as choice and consent, opt-in, opt-out uh, situations, the use, retention, and disposal of data. And then we have SOC 2 Plus reports. SOC 2 Plus allows for additional subject matter assessments to be placed into a SOC report saving your organization time and cost. The way it does that is by saying, for example, in regards to privacy, SOC 2 plus GDPR or SOC 2 plus CCPA. 
it really creates a synergy of the overlapping controls over these multiple regulations to minimize, again, your time and your cost. So what is a SOC 2 certification? That's a question that we get asked a lot. And what it is not is a certification. SOC is actually an attestation. An attestation is a type of report that really just says, when you read this report, you can guarantee the trustworthiness of the controls demonstrated because they have been reviewed by a trusted source. In this case, a CPA and all of the personnel that have to do with that engagement as they are governed by the code of conduct of the AICPA. Then what is a SOC 2 report? A SOC 2 report, again, as I mentioned previously, is further brought down by type 1 and type 2. And so a SOC 2 report, type 1, outlines the design of controls as being implemented and running. It is a point in time report versus a SOC 2 type 2 report that really goes into the design of the controls and the effectiveness of the design of controls over an extended period of time. So let me hand it back to Kishore and let's talk a little bit about the processes uh, to get site 2 adjusted. Thank you, Ricardo. You know, so thanks everybody for attending. You know, I'll just kind of recap some of the things Ricardo talked about, and then we'll talk about, you know, how do you get SOC 2 type 2 attested? Ricardo talked about a couple of things when he did a deep dive into SOC 2. He talked about the principles, right? Security, availability, confidentiality, processing integrity, privacy. He talked about the type of reports, type 1, type 2, type 1, point in time, type 2, period in time, right? So, so those were a couple of things he talked about. He reiterated that you could have a SOC 2 plus a compliance regulation, GDPR, CCPA, HIPAA, to show that you have had the independent CPA auditor look at other things besides uh, just the SOC 2 and look at it from a regulatory perspective. So there are various things that the SOC 2 type 2 attestation can be, and there are various choices that a service organization can make as they go through the compliance process and then they go through the attestation process. So we, we have talked about SOC 2. Now we will dive into what is the control case in SOC 2 attestation methodology? So there are two areas which form the part of uh, attestation. Uh, the first part is the compliance piece, and then the second part is an attestation piece. The compliance piece broadly includes things like evidence collection. It includes things that are automated, such as automated collection of evidence. It makes sure you're looking at manual collection of evidence, uh, making sure you are collecting evidence at various points in time, and really coming to a point where essentially you have taken the first six steps in this case to really make sure your compliance posture to SOC 2 or any other standard is appropriate. The second part of an attestation is where an independent CPA makes sure they review the evidence. Again, I, recall, uh, I, I will reiterate, uh, the CPA, an independent CPA, has to be the one who signs off on SOC 2 attestations. And so the second part of the methodology includes ensuring that the CPA makes sure they are looking through all the evidence, asking the right questions, you know, making sure that the second phase of it includes review of evidence and making sure the reports and so forth are documented appropriately and then released. So again, many steps over here, but there is a compliance step, which includes automation, and then there's an attestation step, which is done by an independent CPA who makes sure that the reports are proper, the evidence is appropriate, and that the company is justified in getting the SOC 2 type 1 or type 2 attestation with the right results. You know, we keep on uh, getting asked often, you know, in the context of managed services, what does it mean that a managed service provider or me as a software as a service provider uh, is compliant or has been attested to SOC 2 type 2? So the first part of that is there are two ways to think of SOC 2 compliance when you look at MSPs. The first one is the more you can 
rely on an MSP who has already looked at and has been top two, type two attested, that's an important aspect from an overall perspective of ensuring that you are selecting an MSP that has uh, some of the right controls in place. So the first one is when you're using an MSP, a managed services provider, and that could be, you know, your public cloud provider. If they are SOC 2 type 2, you are and have some confidence that a lot of the controls that they have that you rely on them for have been looked at from a SOC 2 and from an independent perspective. The second piece which comes out is even though you may be using SOC 2 attested MSP, there are a whole bunch of controls. You know, for, for example, a lot of times the specific application controls or the application security controls that you are responsible for. And so just because your MSP has a SOC 2 doesn't mean you don't have to get a SOC 2. You certainly have to make sure you're looking at a SOC 2 if you're a service organization, of course, to the extent your customers, you see value and your customers want it, but you can certainly use some of the attestations made by the cloud providers on some basic things like physical security and so forth. You know, this, this is another question we get asked often. How do we lower the cost of a SOC audit? Well, to lower the cost of a SOC 2 audit, there are many strategies you can employ to make sure you're reducing the risk and the associated kind of cost associated with a SOC 2 audit. Number one, I talked about it a little bit. Make sure that if you're using a managed services provider or a cloud environment, that they do have a SOC 2 type 2 attestation. That goes a long way because you are then able to rely on a whole bunch of controls from them for that. Number two, Ricardo talked about a bunch of principles or criteria, such as security, privacy, availability, confidentiality, and processing integrity. It is not mandatory that everybody select all the five principles. In fact, if you're not dealing with, if your business process is not dealing with PII, you know, things like privacy may not be applicable. And so remove that from something you're testing against because it doesn't add that much value, but it does, or any value, but it does reduce the scope and the cost, both internal and to a service organization. And then finally, uh, you know, this is true for any compliance. To the extent you can keep your scope bounded properly, Make sure you are ensuring that the production environment is in scope, but maybe some of the other aspects do not have sensitive data and or sensitive processes, maybe development. You can use scope reduction as another aspect for that. So uh, just me, let me reiterate uh, what I just said, which is getting SOC 2 attested is a two-step process. Step number one, compliance. Step number two, getting sure it is attested by a CPA firm. Uh, in our case, we employ independent CPAs who would make sure independent CPA firms do that. Number two, making sure if you're outsourcing any business processes, you are looking at making sure there are MSPs who are SOC 2, Type 2 certified that are getting your business when you outsource. Um, as we get towards the end of this presentation, please uh, feel free to put questions in the questions window. You know, we at Control Case focus on multiple compliance regulations. Uh, I mentioned one audit, assess one, certify and comply and attest to many is a popular offering we have. We use automation, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we use automation in collection of evidence. We use automation in discovery of PII. We use automation in, ma in monitoring vulnerabilities, logs, log setting, and so forth. So. These are important areas where we help customers in automating, which makes things more efficient, but also more accurate. Uh, finally, we do have continuous compliance services, which is ensuring that we are looking at things not in a point in time, but over a period of time, and auditing on an ongoing basis. For example, in scope assets, by any chance did they not get scanned? Was the scope right? Uh, you know, in scope assets have suddenly stopped reporting logs in the middle of the year. Right, that happens all the time. Are there firewall rule sets that go undetected that have crept in since the last compliance or certification? Have there been critical overlooked vulnerabilities due to the volume of assets and vulnerabilities that exist there? 
So continuous compliance really focuses on ensuring that compliance is an ongoing process and not a point in time process. I talked about uh, you know why partner with control case. Uh, you know we do continuous compliance. We use automation wherever possible, um, and then we follow a partnership approach. And and as a testament to our partnership approach, for all our customers as well as for folks who are looking to get SOC 2 compliant or attested, you know we are offering a free one-hour working session, and the end result of that working session would be a detailed project plan that talks at a high level about you know the trust criteria that might be applicable, you know the uh, scope parameterization, you know things like observation period policies and procedures checklists that will make available to you, and so forth. So a SOC project plan development at a high level is something that we are offering to folks who would find value uh, from it. Uh, obviously, we would be giving high-level inputs. The project plan would be really the organizations to use and develop in that working session. We have an email address here. Please email Amy uh, in case uh, you would like to schedule your complimentary 60-minute free working session. If you would like to email her now or you know later, that is also uh, appropriate. Uh, you know, that being said, I think we are towards the end of our presentation. Uh, you know, we have time for two to three questions. Um, and then from there onward, please feel free to reach out to us. If we are not, there are quite a few questions in the windows. So if we are not able to reach every question, which we are not gonna be able to, we're gonna email back the responses to you and also offer you time to set up more time for uh, answering that question. Again, just to reiterate, you know, reach out to Amy for scheduling something that can help you develop your project plan for SOC 2. Number two, here are some of the uh, artifacts that exist out there that would be valuable at a high level to ensure that you're looking at SOC 2 compliance from an overall perspective. With that, uh, I will move to a few questions, and then from there, we will make sure we answer any questions that are left unanswered after this call through email. Uh, that being said, uh, Ricardo, if you can come back online, I think there are three questions that I've looked at that we can go through that we have time for. Uh, the very first one is, what are the various very basic requirements for SOC 2 compliance? Great question. Documentation. Documentation is the key and very most important requirement of SOC 2. It is really about developing documentation, including policies, procedures, risk assessment, analysis. And, and from there, it's about, are they being followed upon by everyone involved with the system as a whole in the organization? Great, Great. thank you. So documentation is big, uh, you know, policies, procedures, risk analysis, things like that are important. So thanks for that, Ricardo. You know, the second one is, uh, I've heard the term inclusive and carve out. What does that refer to? Sure. So inclusive versus carve out are essentially uh, the methodology used as discussed during the webinar for carving out a service provider by using their controls to cover your organizations. So inclusive just means that when we do an audit of your environment, we actually include that third party or that vendor. And so we, we may need to do audit work on their side. This is true if they are not SOC attested. Carve out just means essentially the opposite, that given that they have already become SOC attested, we can simply carve them out of the engagement and we use their SOC attestation report to cover the controls from that perspective. Thank you, great. Um, you know, we have time for one more question, so I'm gonna ask that. Uh, we are right up against the half an hour, so uh, the last question we would address in this call is, uh, if you know, question says I manage a managed services and hosting data center. What TSEs or principles are most relevant to my business? Another great question. Uh, we get asked the question on trust service criteria and how do I gauge myself for that? Normally, any data center or hosting provider has SLAs that specifically address security and availability. So you can select any other TSEs. Uh, but those are the most commonly requested for that type of business or that line of business. Great, thank you. Uh, you know, at this point, we are up against the half an hour. 
Uh, we do have a whole bunch of other questions that were asked, uh, and we will be reaching out shortly with a response. Uh, and then if you need, certainly reach out to us and we can even set up time. Uh, certainly help, you know, happy to help as needed. I thank everybody for attending the webinar today. A recording will be sent out next week. The slide deck will be shared. It'll all happen early next week. Besides that, we will make sure we answer the questions we have uh, that we were not able to get to. Other than that, have a great day. Visit us at www.controlcase.com for other regulations, for other webinars that are recorded, and for future upcoming great webinars on other topics, including things like PCI, FedRAM, GDPR, CCPA. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, Kishore. Thank you, everybody.